So my dad wanted me to be a doctor and my mom wanted me to be a lawyer, like yeah. But right now I'm a doctor because I work in fabrics, like you know, I cut, I sew fabrics, so yeah. <laughs> I'm a doctor when it comes to fabrics, clothing, like fashion. So I think she's okay with that. Well, I've heard a lot of people say ideas rule the world, not money. My twist to this saying is entrepreneurs rule the world. Today on Faces of Ghana, Yen TV has identified a peculiar entrepreneur. Well, I wouldn't jump the gun, I wouldn't bring you his story. We would go in and Talk to him. His name is Ohini Manche. But before we do that, as always, remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. My name is Philip Abutiati. I'm Johnson Matthew Jr., CEO of Ohini Manche Couture and creative director as well. I was born to a family of 10. No, I have 10 siblings, my mom and my dad. But my dad is late and I have three mothers apparently. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I don't call them my stepmothers. They're all mothers because they've played a major role in me growing up. So I have seven brothers, three sisters. Yeah, and then we are all together. Like, the family is very big, but then the unity is very keen and then very appropriate. So I did primary school in Calvary International. Then I moved to Ford. Then from Ford, I did um, secondary school in Tamas. Secondary school, that's Tamasco. Then I graduated from Tomasco and then... What did you read? Um, general Arts. I did General Arts in Tomasco. So yeah, it was for four years. We started four years career. Then from Tomasco, I went to Methodist University. So I started with Diploma in IT. I've always wanted to be a, I've always wanted to be a tailor. I've always wanted to be a tailor. And then it's, it's been something I really had a problem with, with. The way tailors really used to disappoint. You tell them what you want and then they don't really get how you actually want to come out or express yourself in the outfit. So I actually did um, youth employment fire service. I graduated, I passed out, but I didn't work with it because that still, I felt that wasn't what I wanted to do. And then I tried a couple of jobs, but when I was ready to actually do something for real, I, <laughs> I wasn't getting employed. So I, I actually stayed indoors for six months because I was going through a lot of depression. So during the six months, that is when I actually started sewing, that's in learning about the craft, learning more on YouTube, studying more, like learning more about stitches, patterns, fabric, prints, everything. So within the six months, I had to go through a process because there was no friends, no, f it was just family. No one, aside family, I had no one by then. It was just family, my mom, my big brother, who's actually, now like my father because my father is late he's been like he's been on me he's actually been motivating me yeah so it's been family and then i actually learned it within that period of six months online so and then i acquired my first sewing machine and i started in bits and then i'm here today i really love to look good i really love to dress so i was even nominated for fashionable boy back in high school Cause yeah, and then I used to always love outfits that were sewn, like you know, so I look different from my friends. Cause they would come out with jeans, but I'd want to come out with a pair of fine African print trousers and shirts or some. Yeah, so that's how it started. Okay. My mom got upset. She got upset. She's like, "Hey, what do you want the church people to say? What do you want friends and family to say? Really, I've paid fees. Like, do you want to do this to me?" So she didn't understand it. Like, she got very upset. Like, I think for a day or two, we we're not talking. So I went to her at dawn and I told her, Mama, this is what I want to do. I just need your support, your prayers. And then she was like, how well am I going to do? I should, okay, I should tell her how I'm going to actually handle it. I was like, yo, I'm going to really make it look clean. Like, I'm going to do the best and then trust you me, I'm going to actually make you proud. And then she was like, really? So it took time to actually convince her and my siblings. So I remember calling my big brother one time and he was like, you're my kid brother. I should know what you want to do, so I, I support you. And then there's no way I wouldn't support any of my siblings. That's what he said, exact words. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. So he was like, I should tell him what I want to do. And I told him I really want to sew and have like all this, have a couple of people learning, have a school in like two or three years. So he was like, wow, okay, he's going to support me. And he did. So my dad wanted me to be a doctor and my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. Like, yeah. But 
right now i'm a doctor because i work in fabrics like you know i cut i sew fabrics so yeah <laughs> I'm a doctor when it comes to fabrics, clothing, like fashion. So I think she's okay with that. Funny comments, when I hear my friends going like, gossiping about me, or oh, see sweetness, cause that's my nickname back in the day, and it's still my nickname, and then I get people talking about me, oh, see sweetness, here we are school crying to me, and you're shay, in a Kenya tone, if you come on. Like, you know, people were really disappointed. Like, why would you actually graduate from uni and want to be a tailor? Because they felt I was, I was, it was a disappointment, I was a loser, because I didn't study in uni, I didn't study anywhere. So they felt, okay, if I really wanted to be a tailor, I should have gone to like a fashion school. But since I didn't do any of that, they thought I was doing it because I lost. They didn't know the idea, they didn't know the plans, they didn't know the vision. Yeah, so I got a lot of sad like, like comments, people saying, oh, I don't know what to do in my life anymore, see the path I want to take, see what I want to do. Yeah, but... All the same people are actually texting me, calling me, trying to be cool, trying to tell me how proud they are. <laughs> and it's just amazing. Like, I feel good when I'm reading stuff like that, seeing people who actually didn't believe in me actually uh, supporting now. So it's just, it's just been the grace of God, man. Um, when I first met Ochiame Kwame, yes, he actually saw me like, hey, young guy, macho man. <laughs> and I just laughed. He was like, yo, I'm proud of you, man. Keep what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing because he really likes my stuff. And when I actually saw Don Jazzy actually comment on Twitter saying that he loves what I'm doing, he wants one. And he actually coming into my DM to talk about it, sending me his measurements and everything. Um, seeing Serial and then John Dumelo actually commenting on my stuff. Having seen us so follow me on Twitter. Oh. Yes. And then, yes, I had this um, guy, NSG, ODG NSG actually follows and then likes most of the things I put out because they are in London and then they actually like what I'm doing. And then who else? And yen.com is here. And yen.com is here too. So yeah, it's been and it, yeah, yen.com is here too. I make a lot of money. But I'm actually building a brand. So all the money I'm making is not coming into my pocket. It's still going into the business. Because I still need more machines. I'm still trying to get my space nicer and always clean. I'm still giving back to charity. Yeah, so I get money, but <laughs> there's more room for more money. Yes. That first order, I didn't have a machine then. So I used someone's machine to make the first order. So the profits, like I made five, five orders, so the profits from that five orders bought my first machine. So now I can boldly say that you can start a business without money, without capital. Because I didn't have a machine when I started. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't have a machine because there was no machine, there was nothing. To actually use someone's machine, and then yeah so thank you so much to mr imano um the, the only advice or the only reason i'll say you starting something is the best is you actually get to do whatever you have in mind you actually put it down practically because you see you know what you see when you go to sleep you know what you see when you close your eyes you have the ideas you know your vision so you doing your own thing your own business i feel you can actually put it to work you can actually put it down. Oh, this is how I want it. This is what I want to be done. So when it's being done, because you want to do it, it's next to your heart. So you actually do everything with love. When I wake up on a Monday morning, I wake up at 3. So from 3 to 6, I'm in my bed. I'm actually thinking, planning. Then I get up from my bed to my study table, make a few sketches, check others for the week, make a few, a few notes. Then from 6 to 7, I go to the workshop, I see what, we, what I can do for the day, like for the week, make plans again. For, so, because I see the fabrics there, that is where I get to see all the fabrics and then I actually plan and then I, my, 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 my guys come. It's a team. So, when they come to work, we set plan, we share ideas, we make something great, and then now we start work. So, what I do is I spend, I spend a lot of time in Makola getting fabrics. I could spend like a week, four days at least. So I go there, I don't buy the fabrics yet, I pay attention to fabrics, I make a lot of research, I check the textures, I check, you could, I could sometimes even get prints that are wax, but then what I want to do, I wouldn't need wax prints, I'll need just prints, but then, so I actually pay a lot of attention, I go to town, I spend a lot of time to get fabrics, so I just don't actually sketch, I check the fabrics, I'll come back home, see what I can do with this fabric, join one or two, and then you have a shirt made or kaftans made, clothes made, if I may say. Ten years from now, I see myself having a very big fashion school, practical fashion school, practical where you teach people what to do practically, not 
theory, like a better idea now, but practical is an idea. No, you get what I'm saying. So practically, I want to actually have a school, a fashion school. Hopefully, even from next year, I'm actually making plans and I'm praying to God because I've actually prayed and then I'm here, so I'm still praying. I'm not giving up. Yeah. So practically, from in ten years, I should have my own school. I should have my own fabric or textile company. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, I should have. I should be a mogul. Like I should be known for what I'm doing. I should be. Yeah, I should have. I should have my own laundry where I wash and then clean my own stuff, the own clothes, the clothes I make by Honey Manche. We should be, have a laundry, we should, have, we should be important stuff, like work should be big. We are your former. So everything I do, and I talk to my people about it, my team, everything we do comes from our heart. Because that's the only way you get to do it. It's craft. So if you're working with it from, with love from your heart, it comes out right. And then the last is wanting to go far. So these three things actually make me move. Like, I know what I want. I know where I'm coming from, and it's been good. I made a shirt that went viral. Before that shirt, went, that shirt went viral. A day before, I made a shirt for a lady. She received the shirt and it sent me a whole essay of insults, telling me how whack or how dirty my work was. I was really down. But when the shirt went viral the next day, I'm like, at least God brought something clean to me because it was going to actually mess my week up. She actually complained bitterly, complained about, about stuff I didn't actually get. Saying what I'm doing could be done by any wayside tailor. So I guess I've, th that day, I'll never forget that. And then I pray I forgive that client because it really broke my heart. I'm starting something. At least say something positive. If it went bad, bring it. Talk to me. Tell me some. And then that same thing I did for you, I did for someone. And I posted on Twitter and it went viral. And then that shit is actually getting a lot of response by God's grace. So that's, that's thing, that thing that lady did really broke my heart. I don't lie. Okay, risk, I'll say sizes. We have a big problem with sizes when it comes to Africa. Like, because someone will say, I make clothes um, that go international. So someone will say, I wear size 16, but size 16 compared to someone in Ghana, size 16 or a macho man. Size 16, maybe an independent son, and then the person is tall, 16. Maybe the person doesn't like big stuff or small stuff, so they wear big clothes. So 16, and I make 16 based on what I know or what I think or what I. Yeah, and then I send it, and then the person is complaining with sizes. So I, th I feel something should be made. Like, we can have maybe our top designers in Ghana make, like, sit down, plan, and have maybe a measurement for Ghana, sizes for Ghana, like Africa. I feel if it starts from Ghana, the other African, like, countries are going to take it. They should actually come sit, plan, and then have one particular size for Africa. Because our body, our body types are different when it comes to Africa. Like, we have different body sizes, body types as well compared to the white. My DM is lit. My DM is lit, like really lit. Yeah, I get a lot of text messages from ladies, like telling me how nice my stuff are. They're really proud of me, my decision. I'm making them proud. Yeah, I get a, a lot of messages, like nice ones. People even blow me hearts, like, it's nice. Did you mind the edit? I'm very responsive. Yeah, I try my best to actually comment or reply every text messages I get, because I have want to get into, I want to get to the point where I actually interact with my clients so I know what they feel and what they think about what I'm doing. Because they've brought me here, so I really want to actually interact with them and I try my best to. What I would like to tell everybody out there, every young guy, every young lady out there, follow your dreams, work towards it, make a move, make a move. Like making a move is the problem I have with people. Make a move. You can't sit and tell me I need a capital to start a business. Make a move. Like, you be saying it will be bad boy. I'll be who said no. Okay, why you be? You know, you've 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 made a move. So helping you won't be difficult. It'll be very easy. And then talk to God, talk to God, like and then listen to advice. And then keep your family like close to you. Family is everything, especially your mom, your siblings. Like keep it close. Keep it like into intact. Keep it tight. Family is everything. Okay, so parents who don't support their kids from um, doing what they want to do. We have there's a proverb in God that says, "Can be near Bali and can yale." Send a ban on us. A sad corner there. Our parents will die before we die. So they can't actually plan everything for us and then leave us when they are gone. And then what are we doing? Give us a chance. Like give us a room to actually express ourselves. Do what you want to do. Sometimes you know you guys are older than we are, but pay attention. Listen to us, please. Like it, it, it really it really does a lot for us. Believe in us. Just support. That's it.
Yes. Well, I told you he had a superb story. So that is a story of Ohini Manche. This was Faces of Ghana on Yen TV. My name is Philip Abutiati. But before I leave you, remember, if there is any story such as the story of Ohini Manche, feel free to slide into our DMs. Follow us on social media and leave your comments in the comment section. I'll see you again.